The third method that we're going to discuss for slope and deflection is slope and deflection by virtual work. This is the preferred method on the Fundamentals of Engineering exam for those that you go the civil and structural route. Uh, also, what's nice is we do not use moment diagrams. We're going to be using moment equations in terms of x. Virtual work is also known as the unit load method. So the general equation is that deflection or slope is equal to the integral of a unit moment times the actual moment all over the material property, modulus elasticity E, and the geometric property, centroidal moment of inertia I, taken with respect to X as we move along the length of the beam. This method works out real nice to have steps. So step number one is our moment equations in terms of X. Step number two, we're going to unload the beam. Step number three is we're going to add a virtual load or a unit load. And that is going to be, if we're looking for slope, we're going to put a moment load, an applied moment load. If we're looking for deflection, then we are going to put a point load. After we've applied our unit load, we're going to solve for the virtual reactions. Then we're going to solve for the moment equations in terms of x for that virtual load and virtual reactions. We need to use the same direction and same sections that we used with the very first step moments. Our last step is to plug it into the equation. Okay, we've seen this beam before because I've used it for moment area method and conjugate beam, but I want to show you that there's consistency in all the answers. So we've got this simply supported beam with two moment loads, and I want to find the slope at A and the deflection at C, this time using virtual work. From previous methods, we find that AY is 12 and a half kips down, AX is equal to zero, and BY is 12 and a half kips up. Step number one is finding the moment equations. So to do that, I need to take sections. So I'm going to have one section here, and I'm going to call you x1, that starts at A and goes up to, but does not include, the moment at C. And then I have my second section that I'm going to start at B, and again comes up to, but does not include, C. So you see here my free body diagram from section one that represents zero up to eight feet. I have my reactions at A and then I have my internal forces uh, acting from A to C with shear down, normal intention and moment has compression on the top. Positive sign convention is a good thing here. Solving for my moment equation, I get it to be negative 12.5 x1. Same thing for section two. For section two, because we took our origin from the right or from point B, I have my moment applied at B, the reaction BY, my internal forces at that distance X2 that includes everything from zero up to eight feet. Solving for my moment two equation, I find it to be minus 100 plus 12.5 X2. Step number two is to unload the beam. Now that I have my beam unloaded, I need to add the virtual load. I can only do one at a time, so I'm going to start with the slope at A, which means I need to add a applied moment at A with a magnitude of one. I've just put in here a counterclockwise because it's a positive moment with a unit load of one at A. Now that I've done that, I need to move to step four, which is solve for the virtual reactions. I've left these in fraction format. 
uh, but I get BY is acting down at 1 16th, and I get AY is acting up at 1 16th. Moving to step five, we're going to create the virtual moment equations using the same sections that we used last time. So you see here that I still have my blue x1 and x2, so now I'm going to make those moment equations. For section one, solving for my moment one equation with my virtual load, I have minus one plus one sixteenth x1, and then for moment two, I have minus one sixteenth x2. Last is step six, where I plug them all into the equation. So the slope at A is going to be the integral from zero to eight feet of my little m minus one plus one sixteenth x one times big M all over our material and geometric properties, which we weren't given, so we're gonna assume that they're constant. dx1, now I have two sections, so I need two integrals, zero to eight feet of minus one sixteenth x2 find that theta A is equal to 333 and a third kilopound feet squared all over EI. We came up with a positive answer, which means it is indeed acting counterclockwise in the direction that we assumed it. Now we're going to repeat steps three through six for our deflection at C. Of course, this time for the deflection C, we want to apply a point load at C because that's where we're looking for the deflection. Symmetrically loaded, symmetrically supported, we find that AY is 0.5, as is BY. So when we come down to the sections, the same sections that we cut with the original loaded moment equations, we have moment 1 is 0.5x1 and moment 2 is 0.5x2. The load is at C, so that means it's not included on either of these free body diagrams directly. It's indirectly included with the reaction, of course, but it's not directly on there because it only occurs at 8 feet, not 0 up to 8 feet. Then we move to step 6 where we plug everything in. You'll see that our little m equation changes because now we're looking at a point load for the deflection at C but our big M equation, our original loaded equation, does not change. We reuse that every single time. It's only the virtual load in those reactions and moment equations that change. We're going to find that our deflection at C is negative 1600 kip feet cubed all over EI. That negative sign means that it's opposite of my assumed direction. I assumed that it would deflect down. So that means this is actually deflecting up, which if you recall from the moment area method is our assumed direction for the elastic curve. And that makes sense with the moments pulling up on the system. This time, let's say we have a simply supported beam with this triangular load. It's acting over six meters and the maximum height of my triangular load is 15. The smallest is zero. Find the maximum deflection. So if I think about the elastic curve here, I'm going to have a little bit more on the B side of deflection than I am on the A side of deflection because I've got an asymmetric load. And we don't know where that location is. But what I do know is that if I were to draw a tangent line at that maximum deflection, that tangent line would have a zero slope. So if I find where the slope is equal to zero, I will have my location for my maximum deflection. And then I can solve for my maximum deflection. The very first thing that I need 
is the equation for the system uh, system's moment. So I'm going to take one section here and solve for that. Solving for AY and BY, I get AY to be 15. I'm going to take my section to the left because I would rather deal with a triangle than a trapezoid. And I've drawn my free body diagram here. The maximum height of my distributed load is going to change as we increase our distance of X. So we need to write that as a slope. It's going to be rise over run, which can then be reduced to 5 halves x. So solving for my moment equation for the system in terms of x, I find that moment is equal to 15x minus 1 half base times height times the distance to its centroid from my section, which is going to be 1 third of x. Cleaning this up, my moment equation is equal to 15x minus 5 twelfths x cubed. And remember, I'm doing this with equilibrium. It's just we've done so much equilibrium, I'm moving my moment over from the zero side. And okay, I'm skipping steps and being, being a little lazy here. The next step on virtual work is my virtual load and then solving for the virtual moment equation in terms of x. So I'm going to take my exact same system and supports and first I want to solve for the slope because I want to find where that slope is equal to zero. So I'm going to apply my one unit load here, but I have no idea where that unit load occurs. So I'm just going to put it at this unknown distance, D. Solving for my reactions, I have AY is negative 1 sixth, and I have BY as a positive 1 sixth. Now I have a load here this time, so I have two moment equations that I need to consider. Where up here, I only have the one continuous load. We have to take a system of equations on either side of my moment here. But that's okay. I'm going to take everything back to the origin A, and then I won't have to write a second equation for my original loaded system. Solving for my first section before we run into the moment, I have my virtual moment equation to be minus 1 6th x. My second moment equation, which occurs after my virtual load 1, I have moment 2 is equal to 1 minus 1 6th x. Now I can plug it into my slope equation. Slope, which is equal to 0. goes from 0 to my unknown distance d of my loaded moment equation. Times my virtual all over ei dx plus the second portion after the load, same loaded moment equation. second half virtual equation. Okay, when I integrate, I get this set up and then plugging in my zeros and unknown distance d, this actually reduces down quite a bit to my constant 63 is equal to 7.5 d squared minus 5 48 d to the fourth. Solving for d, I have four solutions negative 7.89, negative 3.12, positive 3.12, and positive 7.89. Remember, our x is limited to 6 meters. 
So anything that doesn't fall between zero and six meters goes away, which is my negative values, and that's 7.89. So that leaves 3.12 as the only valid location within our system where the maximum deflection can occur, or actually in this case, where zero slope occurs, okay? Zero slope, remember, is where that maximum deflection is on our elastic curve. So now we have a location. So we can do a second virtual beam. And on this second virtual beam, I have my unit load of one that's acting straight down because I'm now looking for a deflection at that specific point that I found, 3.12 meters from A. And solving for my reactions, I find that AY is 0 0.48 and BY is 0 0.52. AX remains zero. I'm still going to need two sections, one before the load and one after the load to get my two virtual moment equations. And so again, our actual moment equation for the loaded system does not change. Only thing that's changing here is the virtual. For my first section that represents zero to up to 3.12 meters, I have a moment equation one is 0.48x, section two. After setting up our second free body diagram, just after the unit load where we're looking for that deflection, in this case the maximum deflection, we find that M2 is equal to 0.48x minus one times x minus 3.12, which reduces down to 3.12 minus 0.52 x. Now we can plug that into our deflection equation. And solving for our integrals, we find that the maximum deflection is equal to 126 0.8 kilonewton meters cubed over our material and geometric properties of the beam. And we got a positive answer, which means that it is acting in the direction I assumed it, which is down. By the way, I had some of you ask about the Hibbler's Mechanics of Materials book, Appendix C, where slopes and deflections are already solved for simply supported beams and cantilevers. And you will find that our simply supported beam with a triangular load is in that appendix. And it does give the location and equation for the maximum deflection. And by the way, it works out to be 3.12 and 126.8 kilonewton meters cubed. So yay, we match the appendix.